What up, M Squad? Welcome back to the channel today, you guys. This is going to be something totally different. As y'all can see from the title of this video, this is one of my secret obsessions that I have been getting into for the past, I want to say, two years now. And, um... <laughs> This is actually located here in the state that I live in, Charlotte, North Carolina. And when I came across this video, I was totally shocked that we have tiny homes here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I watch, I binge watch a lot of these tiny homes. Um, one person on YouTube that I watch is um, Vanessa uh what's her name vanessa van's life so i'm gonna leave her link in the description box you guys tiny homes actually did a video of her um of her tiny uh of her van life so and her how she decorated the van and how she started from the beginning all the way up to now it is it, just amazing and she has a great story behind her um purchasing the van that was a blessing and how she began to be in van life so make sure you guys go follow her and subscribe to her channel if you haven't um let me get into the logistics y'all already know how this goes okay welcome to all of my new supporters I would like to say welcome to the channel. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, <laughs> I don't know what you're waiting for. Okay, just press that little red subscribe button. And make sure you turn on the post notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new content. To all of my day ones, all of my day one supporters, I just want to say thank you. Without your guys supporting your girl, I wouldn't be here. So I just want to say, well, I will be here, but I won't be on YouTube, okay? So I just want to say thank you. I appreciate y'all's support. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And also make sure you share, share, share across all of your social media platforms. Sharing and watching the ads, commenting, giving the video thumbs up, it helps the algorithm. It helps my channel out, you guys. It's free, okay? It don't cost you nothing to hit that subscribe button, to hit the like button, to leave a comment or two, and sharing it out. It supports your girl. Like I stated in my last video, I do want to put out exclusive content for you guys. But if you would like to see that exclusive content, join the channel as a member. Okay, I'm still working out the logistics of that. As soon as it comes up, I will do a video with you guys and explain everything. And I will put out my first exclusive video for you guys but you have to be a member of the channel you have to click that join button and each thing will show exactly what you would get for being a member member badges your you know your your you get shout out so i will explain all of that to you guys okay so now that i got all those logistics out the way Let's get into this video. Like I stated, I'm going to be reacting to this tiny home video that's located in Charlotte, North Carolina. So, let's get into it. Hi, I'm Jewel Pearson and this is my handmade home in Charlotte, North Carolina. I like Jewel necklace, okay Jewel. I've lived in a tiny house for seven years. Seven years. I, designed I designed my home from, from graph paper, paper and, and um, have, have expanded, expanded since that time and just endured my, my tiny house. 
Born in, Born in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, didn't live there very long, very long but, but I love big buildings, big buildings and big rises and moving traffic and, traffic and people moving, moving and that's kind of where I feel like I get energy from. And, and I can honestly say I would not have been able, able to live in this area, area when I first started my tiny house journey because I was still so connected to needing that energy from the city. But over the course of seven years, life changed, energy changed. So now being on a friend's farm is the piece that I didn't even really know I needed. So I was young, uh, my early 20s, and the responsibility, the responsibility of motherhood, of motherhood single, single motherhood. motherhood. You know, you know at, at that point, point it was often balancing, balancing the checkbook to the penny. To the penny. And, and I just knew that once I got her okay, I wanted, I wanted to, get to get to a point where I could decide, no, I'm, I'm going to just, you know, buy this, this frivolously, not, not I've got to pay this bill and pay this bill and now we've got $20 left. Like, like I wanted to be in a, 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 a where I've always felt like it was lighter. And I stumbled on a story of a woman who had built a tiny house. And it was her story of, of kind of rebuilding after divorce and losing things. And, you know, that wasn't my journey, but more it resonated with me. Like, this is me. This is doing it for me. I'm starting over. And at that point, I decided I'm building a tiny house. Okay, so let's pause. Let's get into it. Okay, as you can see, like the brief things that they showed in this video, I already like some of the details that she have in the video. And just to hear her story, how, you know, she was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and um, she was so used to the traffic and the people and the walking and the, the high buildings and just atmosphere of constantly on the go and then transitioning from that to coming down to little old North Carolina okay hey let me tell y'all something North Carolina is the green state right now constantly building and moving and shaking okay we got all kinds of of things going on in Charlotte, North Carolina right now. Every day, I can guarantee y'all there's something always going on in Charlotte, North Carolina. There's always an event going on every day, every month. There's always something, whether it's concerts, plays, games, you name it, they got it. They got it going on, okay? So, I'm glad that she took that transition from from um coming from up north to down here to little old North Kalaki. This was, this was 2012, 2012 2013-ish, and, and there, there wasn't, wasn't a lot of information, lot of information about, about tiny houses like there is now. Like there is now. The, the movement at that point was so focused on, on minimalism, minimalism and, you and you don't build a house, house bigger than, than 18, 18 feet. feet. And there were like, there were like so, so many things about what a tiny house wasn't. wasn't. But, for but for me, it was my it retirement plan. So I'm doing all the things. I know that's right. So, so this, this is, is the crown, crown jewel, jewel, if if, if I, I might, might say, say that. This, this is the original tiny, tiny house space. This, this is where the dream started. I knew I, I knew I needed to have windows, windows all, all around, around so that, so that no, matter no matter where I put my house, house that I'd have light, light coming in, in, you know, um, um, a, sunrise, a, sunrise, a good sunrise and a sunset just like make, make my entire life. life. Yes. I've got a full-size full bathroom. bathroom, it's got, it's got a washer dryer dry combo unit, unit in it, a bathtub. And the funny thing is I don't use it as much as I imagined that I would. Most of the time that I use it, it's Nina getting a bath and not me. But yes, one of the important things for me and it's one of the things that I say for people interested in tiny houses, houses. Make, it make it your own. own. Make, make it include things, things that make home, make home for you. Yes, make it your so home. So I have a beautiful floating, floating staircase, staircase and at the, at the bottom, bottom of the staircase, staircase there's, there's a landing, a landing which can be which used for seating. seating. I don't have a lot of multifunction things in the house. house. Um, the original flip up desk that was in the corner in the nook, I've taken that out completely. A lot of tiny houses have storage where they'll put their clothes in the couch and the couch, the couch lifts, lifts, up, and lifts up and you get your clothes out. out. I, didn't I didn't do a lot of multifunction. I wanted to think through so I wasn't moving stuff out of the way all the time and, you know, re-navigating the space because I, I knew long-term that would get old for me. 
one, the one overhead loft is my sleeping, my sleeping space, space. And, then the and then the other, other is kind of a plant nook, nook till space. I like that because the majority of the tiny homes that I have been watching, that is true what she said. Um, when you first come in, a lot of them do have like um, like this long ottoman and in that ottoman they have like their clothes, they have their shoes, but also that ottoman actually is used for a seating area for them get for their guests when guests come over, their family members or their friends come over, and sometimes even for themselves. I do I do see a lot of them do say that. And then not only than that, a lot of their um, cabinet spaces that they may have, it may be used for one thing and then they're turning around and flipping around for something else. So I do see a lot of tiny homes that is like that. It's multifunctional. I mean, whatever works for you, works for you. But I see where she's coming from. She don't want to have to... Um, let her guests know, okay, well, you sitting on shoes, and just in case she might have to get her shoes out of there, you know, her guests would have to get up for her to get her shoes um, out there, and then they have to sit back down. So, you know, she's she made this tiny home functional for her. So, to each his own, but I like what she said, though. And then, and then coming, coming through, through pantry, pantry storage, storage, and, and, and then this, this is my, my kitchen, kitchen and... and I can, I can cook. cook. I just don't like to cook. Like to cook. So, so I didn't, I didn't um, devote, devote a lot of kitchen space, kitchen space but, I but I have a very functional kitchen. kitchen. This, this is a microwave and a convection oven, oven, so I can bake, bake and do all, all of those things. things. To burn a cooktop, cook and then and back here, here is the closet. The original tiny house had a very small screened in porch here and an overhead Juliet balcony. And so this is all new. Um, um, it is built on a foundation, and, and this is, this is dedicated, dedicated office, office space, space, and then and just having the, the, the living space, space and, and room for my plants. plants. Really, it's a room that I built for my plants. <laughs> So, so this is, this is you, know, you know original tiny, tiny house. This, this part, part that you see right, right here is original tiny, tiny house. house. And I didn't want to cover it up. It up. Um, I, felt um, I felt like it would be beautiful as part of the design. design. I don't know I don't that, know that I, have I have a design, design style. style. Like it's just kind of like by eye. I feel like, I feel the, like the masks are part, are part of who I am generationally. Like the the. Let me pause that. She does have a um. A design um, basically I can just tell by all of the paintings and the, um, the culture things that she do have in her house that is part of her so that's part of her aesthetic I want to say that's in her house so I can say that she do she just probably got like an eclectic of things that she liked that she put in but I can tell that she loves flowers paintings um, you know, for the culture. So, I'm glad of that. Core, Core of, of my existence, existence is, the, is the, a connection, connection even though you don't, as a, as a woman, of woman of color, black, color, black woman, I don't really know my roots. roots. That, is that is something that, that I'm working on now, now but it feels, it still, it still feels, feels, feels like, like home for me. It feels like, like part, of part of my connectedness to, to, to who I am, and I wanted all of that to be part of my home. Fresh so, this, so this was just like kind of the beautiful open space, and then I realized oh, it's coyotes out here, so we need some some a little barrier. Um, so that was the purpose of the screen. And I used like the polycarbonate overhead, so I still have light in here. That's unique. I like right now. It's my most favorite space. Maybe it's because it's the newest space. So, so, in my mind, mind you, know, you know, as I was thinking, like, the light and lifestyle, I saw myself traveling, and, and I still thought I was building a tiny house space, space that, I that I could travel with, with. And, then and then when I bought the trailer, the trailer and, started and started building, I was like, what are you thinking? You can't travel with this. With this. <laughs> so, so um, it is like, like home base. It's going to stay stationary. It provides my lifestyle of freedom, but I still want to have the opportunity to travel with home. And so that's, and so that's the, the travel trailer. trailer. It, also it also has a bathroom, a shower, shower bathroom, bathroom in it. So it's, it. so it's small, small enough that I can manage myself, but it's also big enough to be self-sufficient. So that's kind of my next project. It's 
all really budget driven, but um, I'm thinking, hoping that I can get it done by the end of this year. I like that. She got two different things. So, so advice for people who are thinking, thinking about, about getting, getting into tiny house living. I think, I think from the beginning, you need to really evaluate how you use your space, the things that you have to have in your space that are important to you. That is so important. If you are thinking about um, looking into doing a tiny home, at all the tiny homes that I have seen so far, uh, every one of them has said the same thing. You really, really have to sit down with yourself and you have to think about the things that are important to you. And <clears throat> you got to also thinking about what things that you can't live without and things that you can't live without. It all boils down to downsizing, but you have to think it all the way through and you have to um come up with a plan that's number one you definitely have to come up with a plan i do see that a lot of them did say they made a lot of mistakes at the beginning and um some of them did have multiple tiny homes you know they uh started off with a tiny home and it didn't come out the way that they want it and then they'll go into the second and the third project by the time they get to the second and third project they already got a down pack they already know what they need you know how it's gonna function and all that so if you are really looking to do a tiny home my suggestion is to look at a bunch of tiny home youtube videos and come up with some ideas write your ideas down figure out you know your budget plan what you're willing to spend what you're not um not able to spend so you definitely have to come up with the budget to the t and figure out how much it's going to cost for you to get the tiny home you know are you able to do it yourself and you get your supplies on your own there are some tiny homes where you can actually purchase from a, a manufacturing company they'll build, build it the way that you like it and they will sit down with you and go over a plan and the budget as far as how you would like to design your own tiny home. Now, I have seen that. But there is a market for tiny homes from all over. I've seen tiny homes all across the United States and even in some other countries as well. So, if you're looking into it, make sure you look at some videos. I will just binge watch a lot of videos. And, and I always, I always say, say, you know, go, go from, from a list of must-have must um, nice, um, nice to have in, in the wish list. You really got, got to, to, know to know you and know yourself and, and, and the things that are going to make you comfortable, comfortable in that space. Right. My, My initial, initial parking, parking space was in an RV, RV park. park. Um, and, um, and I was there for, I was there from May to October. October. RV, RV parks aren't always safe spaces for, for people, people of color, black people, black people and, and I, I ran into some issues there. And so they kind of forced, forced wow. the move um, and, I, and, and I've had that issue another, another time, time in a rural space, space. so it's it's kind of where can you, where put, where can you put a tiny house is, is one, of one of the issues and then there's the, the challenge of where can you put a tiny house as a, a, as, a as a black person as a person of color that you have to think about safety unfortunate, unfortunate but, but the reality there's some, there's some now that hits home because I have seen a couple of tiny homes for people of color to wear. I seen it with um, a couple who are husband and wife. I seen it with a couple husband and wife and their children. And I have seen it with just, you know, just one individual where they had that same issue. And it's sad that, you know, that you have built this your house from the ground up in an rv park i mean the rv park does not belong to the people that stand there it belongs to the person who owns that rv park the people that's living in the rv park they don't have no rulership it's just like that's just crazy but that's the world we live in a lot of people they just sleep acting like this stuff don't happen but it happens and it happens quite frequently than people think. And that's crazy that, you know, you try to go to an RV park just like how everybody else do. And just to have your own place and she don't even feel safe. Now that's crazy.
that's one thing that you got to look into. So before you look into a tiny home, it's best to look at RV parks or um, in a place that you want to live at to see if it's safe for, you know, people of color. And also, you need to, if you're not don't want to live in an RV park, it's best to just do some research and find a place wherever you're going to be staying that is going to be best for you to have your tiny home. In statistics, I think it says the tiny house movement is either 97% or 95% white. And so a lot of my work in the movement is representation, showing black people and people of color as part of the movement, talking to the concerns that you'll have as part of the movement, in addition to just the overall, where can I put a tiny house, but what does that look like for me? And then also, I think it became important for me early on on to show, to show tiny house, tiny house living, living as a viable, a viable option, option versus, versus people just thinking tiny house, thinking tiny house people were weird. Were weird. Um, um, the racism in, in conventional, conventional home buying, it's, it's, it's a known, a known issue. issue. You can look you can at look cities and know exactly how, exactly how the red lining was done because, done because of the way people are located, the way highways are run. At the bottom of the list for home ownership, the percentages of black people, it still remains year after year at the bottom of that list. The conversation around tiny house is, is, is one sorry to pause that but she is telling the truth there is a video that i want to say that i seen last year that they show the red lining in california it was so many states i can't even list them all but the major one was in california of the red lining how they purposely Put the red line in there because they did not want people of color living in these states. And this was a couple of years ago. I want to say at least 10 or 15 years ago. Y'all need to do y'all research because what she's saying is she's speaking facts. To this day, she is speaking facts. So the word is to statistics. So basically, she is speaking facts. Now that I can say. One of the things, of the things where, it's, where an it's an opportunity to get to home ownership quicker. Ownership quicker. It is, an, it is opportunity an opportunity for wealth, for wealth building, building, even if it's not the traditional, not the traditional equity, equity in your, in your home, home. Um, conversation, conversation that so many people say, you know, buying a conventional home allows you, allows you to build equity and a tiny house doesn't. doesn't. But, there's but there's still the opportunity, the opportunity of, I own my home, home and so that income that I would be using to pay for a mortgage, I can invest that. I can save that. And so there's a non-traditional opportunity for wealth building. And if we are challenging the status, the status quo of housing with tiny with houses. Tiny houses. We, should we should challenge the entire, the entire thing, thing um, the inequity. inequity. I, want I want the people who have not had access to housing to, housing to be included, included in this conversation and to be at this, at this table. table. That, that is kind of, of where, where I feel like um, my, work, what my work, what my is. work is. Right. I agree. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to Handmade for more tours like this. Thanks for checking out my house. All right, so what do you guys think of that video? I love Tiny Homes. I love watching it. And a lot of things that she has stated in her video is so true. It is 95% predominantly Caucasian. There is a short uh, short percentage of other minorities that is really getting into tiny homes. I see a lot of the great benefits of having a tiny home. Not even tiny homes. I have seen people transform school buses, RVs. I have seen people transform like Greyhound buses small school buses, vans. I have seen someone transform a 18 wheeler truck. Yes, there is a YouTube um channel where they transform um 18 wheeler trucks. They transform um what was it that thing? Um limos, big jeeps. I'm when I tell you they transform a lot and um you can see the videos from start to beginning but like i stated 
This is one of my secret obsessions as far as for the past two years watching tiny homes and how they start off from the beginning all the way to the end. It's, it's just amazing how you can take one thing and transform it to something totally different. So... I hope y'all guys enjoyed this reaction video. And if you would like to see more reaction videos on this channel, please leave a comment or two and let me know. And if you got some links of some videos that you would like for me to react to, drop them down in the comments down below. Also, go check out my other social media platform channels. Make sure you go follow and like and subscribe to those channels as well. I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you for your support. And I will see y'all guys on my next video. Peace.